Do you want to go? Okay. Maliha, you need to stop. Hello! Welcome back, guys. Okay. Now, for the moment that you've all been waiting for. Thank you. To take things forward, I'm going to introduce, he is a Royal Television Society award-winning reporter and a BAFTA-nominated uh, presenter for News Program of the Year. He has reported around the world and is currently a lead presenter for BBC London Television News. He is going to be leading the next interview session. Please put your hands together for respected BBC reporter, Mr. Asad Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you, Maliha. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you with a greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. A very, very warm welcome to you to this very special evening where we have a very special guest. He is nothing less than a living legend of sport. He is widely regarded as the best ever mixed martial artist of all time. In his 12-year career, he's had 29 fights, no draws, no losses, but 29 wins. He's the only man, yes, ladies and gentlemen, exactly, exactly. Yep, he is the only man with that perfect record. He is the most followed Russian on Instagram. He has over 30 million followers. He's the first Muslim UFC title winner. He is the UFC ultimate fighting champion. He's five feet, feet 10 inches tall. He's only just turned 33 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the eagle, Mr. Habib Nurmohamedov. Salaam alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah, you're okay. Yeah. That is a warm welcome for you. And some people... <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let's hear from the man himself. There are people who say it is rare for a sportsman like yourself, who is at the top of his profession, and has been at the top of his profession, to have the respect of so many people, like you're hearing here tonight. How have you managed to win the respect of these people, as well as being a sportsman? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum <laughs> uh, <clears throat> About respect, like, uh, uh, like in sport, in any, like not only martial arts, any other sport, when kids come to the gym, they teach them uh, first of all respect because you have to respect your teammates, you have to respect coach, you have to respect gym, you have to clean after you, you know. It's uh, all about respect, you know. But some people when they become famous, they a little bit forget about this, yeah. but this is very important thing, you know. This is not only about like you, this guy is your opponent. This is, uh, this is about respect, you know. I don't know about other, other athletes, but uh, when I grew up, it was uh, very straight and very disciplined. And uh, we're supposed to follow this, you know. Respect in this sport is everything. Now, in your 29 fights, you had 29 wins. No one has that record. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but, but there are other people who say winning for them isn't everything. It's about competing. It's about the training. It's about the experience. For you, 
Was it only ever about winning, which is why you have the 29 wins? <clears throat> like, uh, uh, not only about, uh, not only on this sport, like winning about, like even if uh, when I play FIFA, I want to beat everyone, you know. <laughs> like, this is uh, like, uh, even in the gym, we just sparring or wrestling, it doesn't matter. We doing some push up, like uh, it's, I always try to win, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, I don't know why, where, I'm, where I find this, but I think I'm born with this, you know, I'm born with this, I don't like to lose nothing, you know, it's like, um, it was like in all my professional career and amateur everywhere, always it was winning, it was for me everything, you know. And so in, uh, in your mind, do, do you even think what might happen if you lose? Like when you're fighting people like Conor, Mc, Conor McGregor, you know, do, <laughs> do, does, it, does it ever cross your mind? Does it ever, if I draw, if I lose, or do you just think win? Of, you know, it's like anything can happen, you know? You never know, nobody knows future, what's gonna happen, you know? This is not our, this is not a, like, um, how I can say this. It's like, I think about this, and it was like my biggest motivation when I go to the gym, when I think about, oh, maybe I'm, I can lose if I'm gonna train easy, you know? Mm. That's why I push myself so hard, because I don't wanna lose, even for like these people, mm. you know? I don't wanna lose, like, you know? And uh, it was like, when I think about this, uh, this kind of, Things push me very hard in the in the in the gym. Yeah, make sure you do more. Um, speaking to you now, and I'm sure the ladies and gentlemen will agree. You're very you're a very calm person. You're softly spoken. Mm -hmm. In the time I've got to know you, you come across as a very gentle person. Mm -hmm. In the octagon, you're brutal, you're fierce, you're powerful. What goes through your head before a fight to change? Mr. Habib, who we see now, and Mr. Habib, who we see in the octagon. How do you make that shift? Uh, you know, it's like with my close people, with my friends, with people who I know, I am very calm, you know? But sometimes I'm like bummed too. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to Are think, you? you know, I'm not very nice guy. I'm nice guy, I'm not very nice guy, you know? <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah. Who know me is like long time. They all the time say, all the time when you're beginning smile, it's mean very soon it's gonna be something happen. It's gonna oh, something really? happen. That's why <laughs> be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that <know>. look. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> like uh, I'm just regular human being, you know. It's like uh, and uh, my religion told me says like I have to be nice with people. You know, it's like doesn't matter even if they if they are not nice. You know, it's very important. You know, when some when some people they doing something bad for you, if you give them answer, you become on same level with them. You know, you have to have something like uh, like hire them mm. people who try to do something bad with you. You know, and uh, I try to be nice, but no, but all the time be nice, it's very hard too, you know. Sometimes I go crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that. Yeah. Um, now, the past 18 months, as you know, as everyone in this uh, arena knows, have been difficult for many people, and many of us have lost loved ones and dear ones. You yourself, uh, Habib, have lost your dear respected father as well last year, I'm sorry to say, which we make dua, inshallah, for him. Um, is there any advice you can give to people about how to deal with this difficulty of losing a loved one who is close. <clears throat> what my advice? I think when uh, Allah wants something, it's happened. Nobody can change this. And um, what word do you say like when we was in luck room? Like what word do you say? You remember I ask you? Um, I forget about the English. Like, it wasn't a determined word. Determined, determined yeah. You know? You said determined? Yeah. yeah. I know that 
what's mean this, but I don't, I just, you just told me what, what <laughs> this word in English, you know. English is my third language, sorry about it. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> determinant is like uh, most, one of the most important things uh, in our religion, you know. If you believe in determinant, you, you Muslim, you know. If you not believe, you cannot be Muslim, you know. And everything what happened, it's, it was like determined. And, uh, um, and uh, I believe this. And before my father born, before I born, you know, uh, Allah have planned, you know, Allah have planned. He's gonna pass away when he gonna was 57 years old, you know, and this happened. And even I want this or no, it doesn't matter. And you know, then nobody knows uh, our, uh, <clears throat> our, when our time is gonna finish too. This is, uh, this is the life, today we smile, next day we cry, you know, and uh, uh, sometime when tough time come, we have to make sabr, you know. Patient is the key. And I think my advice is, first of all, you guys, under, you guys have to understand uh, what's, uh, what happened with you guys, this is for reason. This is because Allah want. And, uh, and uh, most, like, it's gonna be better if you say Alhamdulillah and uh, uh, you agree with this decision, with Allah's decision, and that's it. Very wise words which obviously people people support you with but do you ever find that difficult like you what you say is is correct but sometimes to practice it can be difficult you know at, when you're grieving when you're upset um, is it a time when perhaps you get closer to your religion to faith to Islam maybe you pray more read more Quran is this how you deal with it no I don't think I don't think this is because of you pray more or read Quran. I think this is about your knowledge. This is everything about knowledge. A lot of people, they read very good Quran, but they, they don't have knowledge. They don't have, uh, like, how to say English, like, yaqeen. I don't know how to say in English, like, believe or something like this. And, uh, and, uh, and what I want to say. And sometimes <coughs> sometime we think, oh, this is my father, and he is my father, and we're gonna be all the time together. Or oh, I have kids, they my kids, and it's gonna be always good. No, and uh, uh, no, father is from Allah, and he go back to Allah, you know. Kids, some, like we think we control everything, you know. And sometimes, sometimes it's happened very, small things and we can understand uh, we can we don't control nothing you know even we have like money house kids like wife mother father everybody is like we think like we family we control something but when something happen when the, we understand we we is, we here is nothing you know we are here for couple years for 10 15 or 65 75 doesn't matter but end is come anyways and you accept Anyways. that, yeah. Okay. Um, your path led you to MMA fighting, which you have done more successfully than anybody else on the planet. If you had not become an MMA superstar, what career do you think you'd be doing? Would it be another sport? Would it be something completely different? I think I just just regular person from village and sell some potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> or something like this. Because, like, I remember when I was a kid, like, six, seven, like, eight, we was living in village, and we have, like, some small farm, and I remember, like, on highway, I was selling, like, some tomato. It was very good tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Not like, like right now is like I I can I can I can feel even if I don't touch when I see tomato I understand really? this one fake or no you know <laughs> and uh, 
At that time, it was a very good time, you know. Yeah. You know, it was like, uh, uh, and uh, if I was not fighter, it was like, I think maybe if there is like good, some football school, maybe I can become football player or, but there is what was only like street fighting, gym fighting, and then I become fighter, you know. And, but I'm like, I'm not fighter. Like inside my heart, I'm not fighter. You know, maybe I'm like warrior inside my heart, inside my mind, you know, it's like, uh, like I can be warrior for my territory, for my family, for countries, like this. But like fighter, just, uh, you know, because it was like my father was coach. I beginning freestyle wrestling, then I moved to judo. After that, I moved to combat sambo. Step by step, then I become two-time world champion in combat sambo. I jumped to the pro MMA career, and I become fighter, you know. And uh, step by step, everything is coming, you know. You've become a fighter. You've become one of the most famous faces in the world. You're one of the richest sports stars, but what you're saying, if I'm correct, is you would be just as happy in Dagestan with your tomatoes, as living in the mountains, living a simple life. Is that correct? You would be happy with a simple life as well? I'm living with a simple life. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? I yeah. hope, you know. Uh, I think I'm living a simple life. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm living with simple life because I'm living in Dagestan. I have house in village, you know. Of course, I have house in capital city too, and like. But uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go back to Dagestan, and uh, and uh, of course I can live in maybe like some California, Dubai, or somewhere. But my heart, my heart there, you know, is like in village. I'm village guy. I love my village. Now, people all around the world and amongst your 30 million followers, they have huge respect for you, um, they watch what you do, they listen to what you say. By having such high standards and knowing that so many people look up to you as a hero, as a role model, Muslim and non-Muslim, is that difficult for you when you make decisions, decide to do this or that? Are you thinking, what will people say and what will people think of me? Or do you just do what comes naturally and do you do it for yourself? <clears throat> you know, always I try to be myself, you know. I don't like being like, I know I can say a lot of things, a lot of good things like, and uh, this one is gonna, people gonna like this, you know. But uh, I never think about, oh, maybe people gonna like this or no. Mm. But I know all the time I say a lot of strange things too, but I don't care. This is my opinion, you know. Yeah. I'm born with this, I grew up with this, and I have straight my opinion. Sometimes like people, when I say something, they don't agree with this, but who cares? I don't care, you know, because because I know I am right <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> because everybody have, have their own views on something. Or like, uh, <clears throat> like for example, like a couple months ago, someone asked me about, I have promotion, I have uh, my own promotion, Eagle Fighting Championship, and someone asked about why is no ring girls there? Mm. I say because I think is it's no reason. It's my opinion, and um, some some people don't agree with this. But who cares? <laughs> I don't care yeah. because I have my opinion. And so that's why. And uh, because this is my promotion, and I make decision. Not Dana or not other people, you know. Dana can do whatever he want. I'm gonna do whatever I want, you know. And uh, sometimes he do something like, I don't understand him too, but I never judge him. 
This is his decision because his name is Dana White. My name is Habib, you know, that's why. And um, I always try to try to watch uh, when I think about something like, uh, no, no, I, I want to say I never watch like what people think about this, no. If I have opinion, I just say, that's it. In order to have this point of view, like to be the way you are, you have to be very mentally strong because somebody like you is in the public eye. Whatever you do, people talk about. Other people, not as famous as you, not as well known as you, not as successful, feel a lot of pressure through these things. It sounds like you don't feel the pressure. How do you have that mental strength? Where does it come from? How can we develop that mental strength? No, I feel pressure too sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, like, I feel pressure, you know, but, but I can handle this. Okay. When, <coughs> when would you feel pressure? For example, when I go to the McDonald's. I feel pressure. I look who's filming me, you know, like, I look, I feel pressure. Uh, if I go with like some friends, I say, you have to go to my back, you know, <laughs> so, and uh, like, for example, today, when you come out from Enfield, and uh, I stuck with like thousands drunk fans of Liverpool, you know, <laughs> It was a lot of people there, even yeah. I cannot walk, you know, it was traffic, people traffic. And I feel pressure because like a lot of people know, oh, Habib, like everybody yeah. tried to come, but they don't, they don't understand why I'm, you know. And uh, it was a lot of people there. Yeah. Of course I feel pressure. Yeah. I was ready for fight. <laughs> <laughs> but, because because day before, I post photo with Sir Alex Ferguson. <laughs> yeah. And it was a very dangerous moment. <laughs> and uh, you guys don't like Manchester too? No. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I just want to say, I come here, you know, it was my, yesterday, it was my first time here in English Premier League and Stadium, it, and it was Old Trafford, you know? Yeah. Today I go to Enfield. <laughs> and uh, today I go, I go to... So today I go to the Enfield, you know, I just... <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't feel the because, pressure. Because I just, I just love like football, you know, like sport. I love this game. Today I was watching this game, like I don't even blink, you know, and uh, I don't care like Manchester, Liverpool, like you guys can support whatever you want, you know. I go to the stadium to watch and enjoy with this beautiful game, you know, and, and today was a very dangerous time when I was <laughs> with Liverpool fans. But it was fun, it was fun. And I was ready for fight. <laughs> so just to let you know, if you haven't guessed, uh, um, Habib was, uh, has come here straight from the Liverpool-Manchester City match, which he saw, and yesterday he was at Old Trafford. Uh, and he was there with Usain Bolt and uh, Sir Alex Ferguson as well. So really getting uh, the best of English Premier football, which uh, uh, Habib follows. Now, OK, so like you say, where you go, there are thousands of people all around who want, who want to see you. There aren't many places in the whole world you can go to and walk down the street and be ignored. Um, when you're back home in Dagestan, do people treat you like the young Habib, the young boy, are they in the same way, or have they changed as well? Like, in my village, I am for everybody, like, I was like young Habib, who uh -huh. sell like everything, like, same. But for other people, like, in capital city, who, like, people who, because there's like three and a half million people, and not everybody in Dagestan meet me <laughs> yet, but maybe future, <laughs> I don't know. But, in my village, everybody knows me, you know, no, I know everybody because I grew up there. But in capital city, when, when they meet me, wow, Habib, world champion, blah, 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 everything, picture, send video, say hello, like always, you know. And uh, I just try to be home when I'm there. I just try to be home, but if I go, uh, like, uh, 
uh, outside. I, I try to go alone. I put mask, put hoodie, you know. I go and many people come to me, are you Habib? It's like, I, 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 I show them like I don't even speak, you know. I just go like this. They try to speak when I say, and they think I'm a little bit, you know. <laughs> it's like, this is best feeling, you know, go outside when people not bother you. Yeah. Just be like a regular person, you know, and uh, sometimes I do this, you know. And no security, nothing when you do that? With the cat down? I look like someone who needs security. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. You certainly don't need uh, security. Like in Moscow, <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago, it was like I put mask, hoodie, and just walk around. And one guy come to me. It was a lot of people there. And come to, can I take picture? And I was walking. I said, no. He said, why? He said, because I don't want. It was like discussed between me and him. We just walking, keep walking. <laughs> he said because, but I won't take picture with you. I said okay, take on the on the way. But I don't want to stop because I know if I stop, put mask off, I have to stop there for one hour, you know. And and uh, and he don't like this, <laughs> you know. It was it was like very nervous yeah. discuss with him, you know. I feel pressure too, but I was ready for fight. You know, like, <laughs> because I don't want to take picture, because now is not time. Sometimes happen like this situation. Yeah. You know. Because but that time I was not calm. That time I was yeah. like You're Because like I ready. just wanna be alone. Yeah. And uh, And that's important to you. Yeah. When you want to be alone, it's important to you. <sighs> Like I told you, I am not a very nice guy. I'm a nice guy, <laughs> not, but not all the time. Yeah. I'm getting worried. You know the way he, how he's looking at me when he says that? It's a little bit, a little bit worrying. Um, you, you've, you've had this incredible career. You have an incredible following. Um, when you look at the future, and maybe when you look beyond Habib, how do you want people to remember you? Do, do you want people to remember your fighting titles, your, your 29 wins, you know, 100% record? How do you want people to remember you in the future? <clears throat> Honestly, I don't want to be like person, like, uh, like example person. I don't want to be like this, but I want to inspire people. This okay. is too different, you know? You can inspire people because you have your own legacy, how you become champion, like everything. But I don't want to be like example. I don't, I don't like this because we already, in our religion, we have example. And I don't want to be like example because anytime, you know, it's like people, people have to follow religion, but people cannot follow like person. Like personal, because I can make make mistake too, you know. I'm regular human, like everybody who sit here, and uh, I can make mistake tomorrow, after tomorrow, maybe like after ten years. Anytime I can make mistake, like everybody, and that's why I don't want to be like people look at me like, for example. But inspire, okay. Today you inspire, after tomorrow you're not inspired. Mm. Who cares, you know? And. Uh, this one is like a little bit bother me when people told me like, oh, you, you is my, you, like, I look at you like, for example, that's why, this, this one is I don't like, honestly, because uh, in our religion, we have example already. But, a, but a, a wonderful example in your life, who you saw was your father, and your father helped you, he helped many young people, he did a lot for charity in his life. So now that your father is sadly not with us, his legacy lives on. Would you like to do the kind of things that your father did, training young people, maybe academies, maybe schools? But, you know, I'm just wondering how, how you would like to spend your time uh, and whether it follows in your father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> between me and my father is a big difference because... Uh, when he beginning, he just tried to invest like 10, 15 people 
like me and all my brothers inside the gym, like 40, 50 people. But he was doing this last, like 30 years. And maybe in Dagestan, like maybe thousands of people he inspired, you know. But me today, I can open around the world gyms, you know. I can help people, I can do a lot of stuff, you know. Because he invested me, and now I'm like three, you know. Now on me, a lot of apples. I have to give people, like, yeah, yeah. same thing, you know. And, um, and that's why I think he made me, like, more better than him, you know. Because when he beginning, he was, like, only one small gym in the, in the village. But right now, look at me. I, I have, we have already in my city, I have a couple gyms, more than 1,000 1, people every day training there. And uh, I'm gonna open very soon in Abu Dhabi gym, then I'm gonna open in Moscow, and around the world here in England, like everywhere we're gonna open gyms. And it's gonna be, you know, it's like, look how things change. But he was beginning, you know, it was his idea, it was his views. I'm just compete his legacy. That's amazing. So his legacy lives on and lives on through you as well. So that's a that's a big thing. Uh, I if, hope if I hope it's on. gonna be lives on me. If tomorrow after tomorrow I don't go crazy, if yeah. I don't lose my mind, I hope. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Um, j just. Finally now, and I'm saying just finally, but not totally finally, because just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after this next question, we're, what we're going to do is have a little break. Um, well, we're going to have a break. You're going to be entertained. And then I'm going to talk with these guys. Th you are going to talk to these guys. Yes. You are. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. We're g Habib wants to hear from you. So if you've got a question you'd like to uh, ask Habib, start planning ahead, start thinking what you're going to ask him, and uh, Habib will uh, answer those questions. My final question, though, for me at the moment is this. I think I know maybe what you might say about the worst thing about being so famous and so wealthy is, is about being, not, not being able to live your own life as you'd want. What's the best thing about being so famous and so big and popular? What's the best thing about it? Being on popular, best Being, things? Yeah, the popular, oh, famous, Nobody rich. asks me like this question. <laughs> best things? Being on popular, okay, like for example, 2008, it was 2008. Uh, I was in Moscow for, for amateur competition. I come there, it was 25 May, something like this, and, uh, and it was championship, uh, Champions League final in Moscow. Manchester versus Chelsea. Yes, yeah. And uh, I, win, I win my tournament. Uh, I become best fighter on this tournament. tournament. They give me extra trophy, you know. They give me extra money. It was like $50. Don't look at me like this. <laughs> and it was like a very happy day for me. And um, I finished all my opponents. It was not professional. It was amateur competition, you know. And the night time, it's supposed to be final, Champions League final. And I go to the stadium and I try to go in, like, no cheating. Yeah. Cheating, you know? I try to find some free tickets, like how we do in Dagestan. <laughs> but, it, but it was impossible. <laughs> My heart was broken, you know? Ah. Because uh, I cannot go in, you know, and watch this game. And now, after 13 years, I come here, Manchester United in white. This is the best thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was like, it was 2008, but 2018, and uh, uh, what's the name? UEFA president, uh -huh. Alexander Cheferin, he called me and he, he invited me to Champions League final in Kiev, Real, Mad Real Madrid versus Liverpool, after 10 years. Amazing, 10 years later. This is because I become famous. <laughs> this one is best things. Other things is all bad. I'm the All bad, yeah. <laughs> Money, fame, bills, everything. Most of the things is bad. But sometimes it's good. Sometimes you can use this. But not all the time. <laughs> Mashallah. 
Mr. Habib Noor Mahalo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to come back, guys. I'm going to come back. So Thank you, there guys. you go. You've heard it from Mr. Habib. He is going to come back. Yeah. He's going to take your questions. These have to be your... I'm not going to ask anything. Your questions yes. directly to Mr. Habib. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to come think. back. Have a think. Hello, guys. How was that? Yeah? Do we want more of Habib? Can I? I can't hear you. One, two, three. Fantastic. Guys, don't leave because he will be back. And next time, as Asa said, he'll be taking your questions. Before he comes back on, we're going to have another auction, a couple more auctions. So please put your hands together for Naeem and Sultan. I actually thought that cheer earlier on was for me and Sultan, but obviously it wasn't. Listen, Khabib is going to come back in a minute. Shh. He will take your questions, so get your questions ready. We've got another two or three items to auction off because we run out of time. They'll all be signed by Khabib himself. Our next item is standing next to Sultan, which is this piece over here, which is brought onto stage at the moment. This will be signed by Khabib in a minute, inshallah. Sultan, do you want to grab this piece over here? Right, this is this the, piece of, this is the item. Forward? This is going to be signed by Khabib shortly. So we'll auction this item first. Right. This item here, once again, is a one-off. It'll be signed by Khabib in a few minutes, inshallah. I'm going to start the bidding at £1,000 for this item. Can we get the lights up a little bit so we can see everybody? I don't want to miss a hand. There's a £1,000 over there, the sister. Anybody at 1500 there's a thousand over here. Do we have anybody at fifteen hundred pounds? Fifteen hundred at the back over there. Do we have somebody at two thousand? Is that your two thousand? It's fifteen hundred over there. Two thousand over there. It's fifteen hundred. Yeah, fifteen hundred. Two thousand. Two five. Two five. Three. Three. Three and a half. Three and a half. Four thousand. Three and a half. Four thousand. It is four and a half thousand. Anybody? 4,000 pounds on my right. Do we have anybody at four and a half thousand pounds? It's going once at 4,000. It's going twice at 4,000. It's going 4,500, sir. Anybody at 5,000 over there? 5,500 over here. 6,000 I'm looking for. 5,500 going once. 5,500 going twice. Is going 6,000, it is. Six and a half. 6,000 going once. 6,000 going twice. Going six, six and, a half, and a half. Come on, you've got to give people time. Six and a half, it is. 7,000, I'm looking for. Six and a half going once. 7,000, yeah. Six and a half going twice. Going seven. Seven and a half. 7,000 going once. Going twice, going seven and a half, eight, <laughs> 7,500 once, 7,500 twice, 7,500 it is yours. Thank you. Give well a round of, round of applause, please. Let's get the next piece on. This one is a much bigger piece. It's on canvas, beautifully done. This really is striking, mashallah. Not all of the pictures are, alhamdulillah. I'm going to start at two and a half thousand. This should go for a lot, lot higher. But just to get everybody a chance to get in, I'm going to start at two and a half thousand for this piece. If you can bring it forward, that would be really helpful. Anybody at two and a half thousand? Starting bid over here, sir. Thank you. Anybody at three thousand? Two and a half going once. Do we have anybody at 3,000 pounds for this yellow 
stripe, this one here, beautiful piece. Two and a half going once, 3,000 over there. If I don't see you, give me a shout or something. Three and a half, is that three and a half? It's 3,000 over here. Do we have anybody at three and a half? 3,000 going once over here. Do we have three and a half thousand for this piece here? It'll be signed by Khabib in a few minutes. Anybody at three and a half is going once for 3,000. It's going twice at 3,000. This is at three and a half it is. Do we have 4,000? 3,500 over here going once. Anybody at four? It's going at 3,500. It's going. It's going. It's yours. Thank you. I think you've got a bargain. That's a beautiful piece. Alhamdulillah. Right, I think we've got a couple of gloves that have just been handed in. They weren't dropped on the floor or anything. <laughs> We're just bringing them through, inshallah. And as I said, if you get ready for your questions, I think there'll be a number of microphones coming around. And Asad, inshallah, will come back and look after you so you can ask your questions, Khabib, directly. We've got one more item, name. Okay. You know the pair of gloves we auctioned earlier? Uh, there is another pair of gloves that has been donated by a gentleman uh, what was in his the name? audience. What was his name? James. James. Where are you, James? Put your hand up. James, where are you? Give us a wave there, over there. The back. Can you give him a round of applause, please? Now, those pair of gloves are with Khabib as I speak. They are UFC gloves. James has donated it for auction. And James has donated one glove to be auctioned here tonight. So one of you can win one of those gloves. So you've all Khabib seen the gloves. At the you've all seen, you all know what the gloves look like. So they're coming in a minute. But let's start the bidding off. It's on one glove. The other one, inshallah, we're going to give back to James because he donated them both. Uh, so we're going to do one glove. So we'll start off the bidding at £1,000. Do we have a bid at £1,000 for the last glove over here? Do we have anybody at 1500 over there? Thank you. 2000 over here. 2500 do you have anybody at two and a half thousand pounds for the last glove of the night? Over there, so two and a half thousand pounds. Anybody at three thousand? Two and a half thousand going once over there. Anybody at three thousand pounds? Two thousand five hundred going once. Anybody at three? It's two thousand, three thousand, sir. Anybody at three and a half thousand? Three thousand going once over there. Anybody at three and a half? It's going twice at three. Three and a half over there. Anybody at 4,000? 4,000 it is, sir. 4,005. 45. 5,000. 5,000. 55. 556. I feel like I'm a cattle market. Five and a half. 6,000. Going five and a half once. It's going five and a half twice. 6,000. 65. 657. Six and a half going once. Anybody at seven. Fair warning, I think they say. Six and a half twice. It's going. It's going. Over there. 7,000. Wow. 7,500, sir. 7,000 going once. 7,000 going twice. Going. Going. It's yours over there. Give them a round of applause. Brilliant. Is that us? I think that's the end of the items, alhamdulillah. And don't leave the auditorium. Khabib is just about to come back with Asad. And inshallah, we'll take your questions live from the, the ground uh, rather than Asad asking any questions, inshallah. Anybody got questions for Sultan? <laughs> what kind of questions would you have for me? Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. And uh, as I said, Khabib and Asad will be back in a few minutes, inshallah. All right, listen, this is, what's your name?
letting me. Um, this piece. Bismillah. Okay, uh, before we go on to the next piece, if I can request everybody that has won an item at auction, can you please come forward, see one of the volunteers, and give them your details? Uh, because we can't take any of your names. You know what item you've won. Please give them your details so we can deliver this I these items to the correct individuals. Okay? Thank on you. Now, this next, next item is a calligraphy of Khabib, and it's the Arabic writing Habib which is how you pronounce Khabib's name. And uh, this is also up an auction, and it's going to be signed by Habib in a bit as well, inshallah ta'ala. Name, how much are you going to start this off on? We're going to start at 1,000 pounds. It's a very, again, collector's item. It's a unique item. It's the only one of its kind. 1,000 pounds bid in. Where's the hand? 1,000 pounds on the right hand side. Over there, 1,000. Anybody 1, at 1,500. It's a beautiful item. 1,500, sir. 2,000, anybody? 2,000 over there, two and a half. 2,000 in the middle over there. Anybody at 2,500? It's going at 2,000 over there once. Anybody at 2,500? Oh, okay, okay, calm down. 2,500 over there. Anybody at three? 2,500 going once. Beautiful item. Collector's piece. 2,500 going twice. Asking price is 3,000 going. Going. And 3, I think bid. it's 3,000 bid. It's 3,000. Where is it? 3,000 bid by There's the 3,000 over here. 3,500. 3,000 going once. It's going twice. It's going. It's going. It is over here. 3,500. 4,000. 3,500 it is at the moment. Anybody at 4,000? It's going once at three and a half. Anybody at four? It's going twice at 3,500. It's going, going. Go it is yours, sir. Thank you. Put well your hand up. Brilliant. It yourself, brother, yeah? Fantastic. Give him a round of applause, everybody, please. Thank you. Name. We yes. can't go off yet. Oh, my God. Yeah? <laughs> we've, got, we've still got some work to do. Okay. Right. These are posters that have been signed by Khabib. Might as well sit down. And uh, there's quite a few oh, of them. Oh, they've all been signed. Oh, wow. I think there are five or six of them here. Uh, one, oh, two, okay. three, four, five. Five. Five pieces. Nice, right, sir. Five pieces. I'll tell you what we could do is we could ask for the first five hands to go up with a certain price. And see, well, then we might have to chase a lot of people. Or shall we just do one at a time? Okay, this is obviously from the event itself. They've already been signed by Khabib himself. And obviously, you can get them framed as you take them home. Shall we start the bid at 500? Is that reasonable? Hey? 500? Over there. 30 quid. I'd rather take them home. Thank you. Right. but um, And remember where off. the money is going. It's going to go to the project, which is really important. Anybody at 500? Over there. Thank you, sir. Two of them. Okay, there's two out of 500. Anybody at 750? 500, I'm going to give him two of them for the start. Anybody else at 500 to 750 we're looking at? Two going here at 500. Now, Anybody let me just add something, Name. 750? Name, let me just quickly add something here. This poster is obviously date marked for today's event. It says that you were here in Harrogate on Sunday, 3rd of October, 2021. And Khabib is going to sign this. And we haven't got five of these. We've only got three. The other two are of the London events. Anyone that's here from the London event, you can take those as well. But only three are available for the Harrogate event. Two at 500. Anybody want to top that to 750? It's going once at 500 for two of them. Anybody at 750? It's going twice. Going. You know what? I want you to give this guy a round of applause, first of all. Please, I'll tell you why. Because he has been very generous in bidding all night, so I'm going to give you both of them at 500 each. Bismillah. Over to you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll come to you. Don't worry. Right. The next one at 500 again. So you over there, 500 for the last one. Anybody at 750? It's 500 over there. Anybody at 750? Young man on the front. 750 over here. 1,000. 1,000. 1,250. 1,000 at the back. 1,250. It's going once, yours, it's yours at 1,000, don't worry. 1,250 bid. 1,250, 1,500. 1,250 over here, 1,500. 1,500, 1,750. 
1,500 at the back going once. 1,750 we're looking for. It's going twice at 1,500. Going, going. It is yours at the back. Thank you. Give them a round of applause because they seem very happy. And the last two are from London. Uh, we have two from the London event. They're date stamped yesterday. So again, I'll start the bidding at 500 for the first one. Anybody at 500 pounds for the London event? Over there. Thank you. Yours first. Anybody at 750? It's 500 over here. Anybody at 750? It's going to go twice at 500. Anyone at 750? It's going, going, and it is young man, it's yours. Give you a round of applause. Come on. Everybody give him a round of applause. Brilliant. And the last one here is from the London event, again at 500. Anybody, the last item of the night, 500 pounds for the London event, signed by Khabib. Do we have anyone at 500? Anybody at 500? You are 500 no, bid. over there? 500? 500. Thank you. 750? 750 bid. 750 over there, yeah? 750, 1,000. 750 going once, 750 going twice, going, going. It is yours, young man. Thank you. Well Give done. him a round of applause, please. Thank you. What's your name? Musa. Right, fantastic. Look, we're going to let you get on, and uh, Khabib and us will be back in literally a few seconds, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. You're either, you're either really happy to see me or you just want to see Habib again, right? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> bear with me, guys. Habib and Asad will be on shortly. At this point, I'd like to say a big, big thank you to our, auction, um, to our sponsors again, without whom this evening would not be possible. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Islam Channel, who are our principal media partners, Iman Channel, Manjaro's, The Date Project, Eaton Adams, Solicitors, Al Ajr, Ashman Solicitors, IK Collection, I believe Imran Khan, designer, celebrity designer from West Yorkshire, is in the room. Where are you, Imran? Imran, where are you? Actually, let's get Imran on the stage. Where's Imran? Yeah. No, I don't think we have him. Anyway, do you know what? Thank you, sir. No, I didn't. No, thank you. Can you? <laughs> thank you. Do you know, it's actually my mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Can you leave that mic on the stage? Thank you. Okay. So, in a room full of Pakistanis, if you call Imran Khan, 25 people come on stage. That's one lesson well learned today. Okay. Back to our sponsors then, guys. We've got Ashman Solicitors. We've got IK Designs. We've got Fee for Life. 
We've got Heritage Carpet. We've got Stevie B's Gym. Over there you are. We've got Stevie B's Gym. We've got Kashmir, Kashmiri Karai. Where are you guys? We've got LPS solicitors. Are you in the room? Fantastic. We've got Cafe Noor. We've got Estabulo UK. And of course, we've got Myla Hawes again. Where is the team of Myla Hawes? Thank you. Just to remind you guys, Myla Hawes donated a lot of food which was on sale yesterday at the London Indigo at the O2. Um, they've donated all that food and all the proceeds from the sales from yesterday's donation has gone directly to the charity. At this point, again, I'd like to say a big thank you to the SKT team, the CEO, Asif Khan, Asif Hussein, pardon me, the respected trustees, the creative and marketing team, the fundraising and administration team, the content writers, and all the amazing volunteers, guys, these, without these guys, this event would not have been possible. All of you guys in the red t-shirts. Guys, come on, wake up. I think you can give a bigger round of applause. Thank you. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Pishtad, who's been recording tonight with him and his team. A big thank you to Naeem and Sultan, our fundraising champions. I'd like to say a big, big thank you to all of, the, um, all of you guys, the audience members, especially those that have bought the meet and greet um, tickets. You will get a chance to meet Khabib personally later on tonight. I'd like to say a big, big thank you to the, to the venue staff here today, the AV team, the team in the technical space up there, and of course, I'd like to say a really big thank you to Khabib and his team for coming all the way to the UK. Right, whilst we wait then, who's got their questions ready for Khabib? Yep, he's coming guys, he's, he's on his way out. But the louder you make noise, the quicker he'll come. That's what I'm being told in my ear. So can you make some more noise? Yep. Have we got any children in the room? Children, stand up. How many children do we have in the room? Right. Okay, now, I want all the, all the children in the room to shout Habib as loud as you can because I've heard he's interested in speaking and getting questions from the children especially. So now, I'd like, to make, I'd like all the children to make as loud of a noise as you can, because he can hear you. He's backstage getting ready to come on. So after three then, one, two, three, just the kids. Yeah. What do you think, guys? No? Can we go louder? Can we go louder? Right. Louder this time. One, two, three. Do you think he heard us? Do you think he heard us? No. Okay, so do you know what? Whilst we're waiting, I think his team was... Shh, 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 shh. Right, listen, he's coming, don't worry. There were some conversations backstage. They wanted to know where you guys have come from. So the team, Habib's team, were asking me, where are all these guys come, uh, where are they from? So, where? We've got Brad. Okay. Okay, listen. One second. Let's find out. Let's find out which area. No, no. Listen, guys.
As promised, as promised, I've got a man over there who really wants to speak to you. So I hope you've got questions. Let's get him on. Mr. Habib Nurmagomedov. Here he is. Here he is. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. MashaAllah. You wanted to, please, you wanted to speak to these people. I think they want to speak to you. Okay. Excellent. Now, do we have anybody in the audience who would like to ask a question directly to Mr. Habib? We've got a few hands up. Right, we've got time for this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get around as many questions as possible. If you can keep, say who you are, and if you can get straight on with the question, then we can get to more questions. This young man over here, I need you to speak loudly. Stand up. Give us your name really loudly and ask your question directly with Mr. Habib. Y Yusuf. What, was it, what did it feel like beating Conor McGregor? It, it, was, my, it was my best feeling inside the act. <laughs> Great, great question, great yes, answer. Okay, um, let me go over to the back there. Okay, there's a man there wearing sort of a waistcoat, uh, slightly pink shirt next to the cameraman. Yes, shout out your name and shout out your question, please. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Right, thank okay, you. thank you very much for the thug beers. Let's try and keep the thugbeers to the end, please. Let's get genuine questions here so Mr. Habib can speak to you. The brother with the hat, with the doorby there, please. Nice and loudly, your, your name, please, and your question. Sorry, what is your... With a Dagestani Imam Shaman. Yeah, I understand. Do you know? Okay. <coughs> Wa alaikum salam. My connection with him, I, he was our, I am our, and uh, we're from almost one place from mountain. And uh, he is our hero from Dagestan, you know. And uh, he was, even like, uh, he was fighting versus Russian Empire, like 10 years, like uh, just regular fighter, and 25 years, like Imam, 35 years. And uh, even Russian Empire respect him, you know. And uh, he was one of the greatest warriors of all time. It's my opinion. Thank you very much for that. Let's get over to the seats at the back, because I don't want anyone to be left out here. Uh, there is somebody... Right, see where that guy is with the T-shirt? There, to the right of him, who's just walked up the steps. Yes, uh, I can't even see whether it's a sister or a brother over there with your hands slightly, or your arms slightly like that. Can you shout out really loud? Give us your name and your question, please. Really loud. So I, I didn't even catch that. Your name's always, do you want to grapple anytime soon? Is that right? You know what? It's your life. It's your life. Are you ready to... Look at this, man. Quickly, quickly. Come on, quickly. come on. <laughs> what do you know about grappling? <laughs> What's your name? Wise. Wise? Yeah. Okay. Where are you from? Russia. You feel pressure? <laughs> I ask you, you feel pressure? No? <laughs> Take picture, guys. One day we're gonna wrestle, but not today. Okay? <laughs> Thank you very much for that, always. Thank you. There's a picture to remember for you as well. Just mind the steps as you go down. Brother over here, right at the front, red shirt. Oh. 
Islam versus Dan Hooker is going to be a uh, very big challenge for Islam. It's going to be a good challenge, you know. He is number six uh, on ranked. And, uh, and, but I think, I think, like, Hooker, he never fight someone like Islam. He never fight. He, all his fights, it was, like, only versus strikers. I don't know what he's going to do with Islam. Wrestling, pressure, dominate on the ground, like how he's going to stop. Only one thing he can, he have, he have only lucky punch. If without this, like 99%, Islam going to maul him. Thanks very much for that. I'm going to go over here now. Uh, the man over there, just uh, waving your hand. Yes, yeah, stand up, please. Nice and loudly, please, so we can all hear. Okay, Ali, that, that's, okay, thank you for that, but we, we want a question. If you haven't got a question, please don't raise your hand. We want this purely for questions. The man over there, please, yes, yes. What's what, sorry? Offer? What, I don't even understand. Best offer, like, no, I understand, I understand. Do you understand? understand. Okay. You talk about money? Yeah. Okay. No, it was like a couple months ago when uh, Ali told me, Ali called me and he told me, like, then I sent a message, why Habib never asked me how much money I'm going to give him for comeback? You know, it's like, I don't know. I never talked with him because it was not discussed about money or opponent because I make decision, I'm finished, and that's it. You know, it's like. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, gentlemen over there, white top. I am going to try and get around to as many questions as possible, so please don't get too frustrated. I am going to do my best. Okay, yes, sir. No, it's like always when I have opponents, when I have fight, when I have my training camp, and I, I always was preparing my pressure, you know? It was not only with wrestling, it was with striking, it was with head movement, uh, footwork. I put everything on my training camp, you know? I was preparing for everything, but main goal, it was father plan. Father plan was grab him, take him down, and finish him, you know? And... Uh, <laughs> and it's like, even, even if I cannot take him down, doesn't matter. Just be relaxed and do your things all night. If you can, if you can stop your takedown once, twice, like, doesn't matter, ten times. My plan was, you have to keep going all day and all night, doesn't matter, you know. It was my game plan always. Okay, let me go up to the top there. Um, somebody waving like that. Okay, if you're going to have to really shout very, very loudly. Please do. Okay, can we just hear this question, please? Then we can move on more quickly. The more you talk, the more we can't hear, and the longer this will take. Yes, sir. So I, I, I can't hear. You're wasting your own time because you cannot ask questions if, if we're, we're all uh, talking at once. Yes, sir. You say who's, who's bad? Better? Who's, who's better? Bad? Who's better? DC or K? Who's best or bad? Best. Bad. bad. No, like, always, like, with DC, uh, I have, like, special, very special relationship, like, always. You know, it's like, with Kane, it was very, very good relationship, too. You know, it's like, Kane is the best sparring partner. Even if you lightweight, middleweight, flyweight, doesn't matter. He always work with everybody. And he try to don't hurt opponents. Like the, but when he go to the cage, like sparring room, it was, he, he was like a very bad sparring partner because, because he was like smashing like all his opponents. I remember like when I was, it was like the 2014 or 13, I think it was, his third, second fight versus Junior Dos Santos. I was watching his sparring. 
almost 10 years ago. Uh, Javier changed uh, for five rounds. He changed his four opponents. And all the time he put, he put with him on the cage fresh, fresh, fresh opponents. And uh, he was making everybody tired. Like Kane on his prime time was the best ever, is my opinion. But DC, like personal and like fighter too. You know, he's two-time Olympian. He have like how many fights he have? UFC, Strike Force, Strike Force Grand Prix, heavyweight champion, light heavyweight and heavyweight UFC champion. You know, these two guys was uh, like one of the best of all time. You know, and they very good friends each other and they push. They push each other and they make two, like both of them, like legends, you know. But but I pick DC, but I hope Ken don't see this video. <laughs> Thanks very much. Right, I'm going to take that question from you in a moment. Let me take a question from this young lady over here. When you were younger, did you like wrestling bears? Of course, I don't like, but father push, what can I do? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, like I told you guys before, who cares? <laughs> you know, like my age, when I was young, when I was young, when I was like 9, 10, 11, like when I was like kid, always, even if you go to someone's house or some, some of my father friends come our house, if there is someone is like in my age, my size, I know I'm gonna fight with this guy <laughs> because, <laughs> because he, father always make us wrestling, fighting, and uh, everybody who was my age, my size, I was thinking like all my enemy, you know. It's like, uh, it was very hard time, but then I become world champion. <laughs> Have you seen the YouTube video of Habib fighting the bears? Amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. Thank you for that question. The young boy over there, yes, uh, go on, nice and loud, please. So, sorry, I missed that. Ronaldo or Messi? <laughs> I, Give Habib a chance. I don't even don't say nothing. <laughs> Let's hear what he has to say. Let's hear what he has to say. Ronaldo or Messi? Of course, Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's Ronaldo. Great. Gentleman in the blue T-shirt. How to build good character. How to be build? I think, I think you, have to, you have to be with good people. And then you can watch how they're doing, how they say something. Like this is very important. If you're gonna be always with good, uh, with good, with bad persons, they're gonna say a lot of bad words. And after you become same, you know, it's like, this is very important who is around you. This is like most important. Because like one day, two day, like, like years, years, and when you're gonna be with bad people, you're gonna be like them, you know, 100%. Nobody can change these uh, things, you know. That's why it's very important around people. Thank you. Now, I've just been told Muslim Education and Development, the charity Mend are in the room, uh, and there is somebody who wants to perhaps ask a question from there. Is there... Mend? Are you from Mend? Right, I don't know who it, who it actually is, so I'm going to carry on until, uh, until we find someone. Gentlemen in the ste we're on the stairs there uh, with the white hair, yes. We can't, we, can't hear, we can't hear the question. I think, I think if, if it's, if it's going to be one round, one round fighting, I think it's going to be, I don't think someone can submit each other. But if it's going to be five round championship fight, where you have to show your heart, I think if Islam can break him. Now this is, this is not because of like he is my brother. This is because, this is this is because I watch a lot of 
um, uh, Charles Oliveira fights and Lara Islam fights. And uh, Islam physically strong, mentally strong. His ground game, his uh, sambo and judo technique is much, much better. I just think, think like second or third round, Islam can break him. My opinion. Thank you uh, for that. And I think we found the person from uh, the Muslim Education Development Trust, the gentleman over there with the jacket waving. That's you, sir, isn't it? Okay, nice and loudly, please. The, the problem with the, the gentleman works with is Muslim education development, which deals with Islamophobia. And the problem with Connor was that about your faith, about your religion, about Islam. Was his problem that? No, it's like when I go to the cage, I was uh, thinking about like, because I have to stay professional. You no, know, it's like this is, uh, you cannot become emotional when you go to the cage, you know? This is very, very sp special night, and you have to be on a very special feeling, you know, because Lara thinks coming together in one time, you know, it's like pressure, like, uh, like, uh, like, you have a lot of feeling in same time, and you have to handle this, you know, and if you're gonna think about everything, it's gonna be like uh, you're gonna lose your mind. You know, you're gonna lose your focus. And that's why that night I was, uh, I was just focused on him. I was just focused on when cage close, I'm gonna catch this guy and we will see who's gonna talk, you know. I will think like this. And, uh, and uh, honestly, honestly, like, like, um, like about Islamophobia, I don't know, like, uh, when I go to the cage, like with fighting, I can show this, like how good Islam, is. like I don't think this, you know? I just try to show by myself, my religion outside the cage, you know? Because, uh, because a lot of, a lot of uh, people, like good people, they become like good persons, like not because of their fighting good. Not like, like for example, is Muhammad Ali, he was like, like just fighter. He was, he was not greatest, like, like he was not greatest of all time. When, it's, when, when we bring everything together, what he did outside the ring and inside when he bring everything, when we bring everything together, then he become best, uh, best of all time, you know. That's why it's, um, it's very important who you are outside the cage. You yeah. know, because how many people knows how to fight? Like, I know how to wrestle, many people know how to wrestle, you know? I know how to punch, many people know how to punch, you know? But worry about being a good person outside the cage. This is very important, you know? It's like, uh, like I see, I, 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 I see this video, how he punched like seven years old uh, man, it's like he punches face. I don't understand this, how it's like, if, you, if your heart is like, I don't talk about like, like everybody is like clean, but sometimes we make some make like bad decisions too, like bad things. But I don't think someone can punch old men face. This is like most terrible things can happen with you. You cannot punch old people. If you, if you wanna punch people, okay, come, punch my face if you can. But, but yeah. you cannot punch old men, you know, it's like, this is show who you are inside. Okay, right. At this point, for health and safety reasons, please take this seriously. We need to clear this walkway. Please, if you're on this walkway taking photos, please just take a step back so this walkway is clear. The other thing is to make this slightly easier so you can all hear these microphones one and two. You can ask your questions here unless you've got a really loud voice. Gentlemen over there in the corner, yes sir, with a t-shirt. You can either come down here or you can shout very loudly. Very good question. From Josh there, he's saying, what is your greatest strength inside the ring? What is your greatest strength outside the ring? And is there anything they can do together? Strength, your, your, your toughness, your... I think 
inside I doing my doing this job like best in the world I smash people outside I just don't smash people <laughs> <laughs> very simple very you simple know, because, answer because I know it's like my skill my skill like if I fight like with you for example <laughs> brother I can kill you sorry <laughs> That's why I don't want to fight with you. I don't, we have problem because uh, like uh, all my life, uh, like, I'm learning to like beat like professional athletes. That's why outside I cannot fight. I cannot use my, my skills. I don't use this. I think this is the best one, you know. And inside, when cage close, referees say go. I'm doing my business is like best in the world. Alhamdulillah. I think it's the things. Alhamdulillah. He was pointing to you, Josh, when he said he could kill you, not me, it was you. Uh, right, gentlemen here. C come up to the mic, why don't you, yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Khabib. Khabib, I've got two questions for you, if that's all right with you. J just the one question, please, just the one. Oh, it's okay. Okay, are you okay? Okay, if you're okay. Um, so, obviously, I uh, just want to say my brother Junaid uh, Badali is a very big fan. I've got a friend called Samir Khan. Um, he's 17, is a boxer, and he absolutely loves you, you know, when you post, alhamdulillah. He's skinny, and he's not the biggest, but he has a lot of heart. What would you say to him in order to become a better boxer, inshallah? <laughs> brother, if this guy's skinny, brother, you have to lift him. <laughs> Send him to the gym. Okay. <laughs> okay, and the, the second thing is, um, my name is Ishaq Patterson. Um, I'm a 17-year-old uh, semi-professional striker, football. You know, inshallah, if I become a professional footballer one day, would you take your time to potentially see me play? <laughs> you 17 years old, uh, football yeah, player? Semi-pro. Semi-pro? Yeah. What, what do you say? Sem uh, it's like semi-professional, it's like non-league. Yeah. What is not, it? Not no? quite professional, not amateur, just in between. Like Nearly between? professional. Yeah. You're 17, you have to be on some big team. You're 17, you're late, brother. I'll get there, I'll get there. <laughs> what are you doing here? It yes. Uh, 17, like people become world champion. 17 years old, like football player for football player. You know, no, it's like real talk. Please listen. You know, you know, I know just want to give this guy advice. You don't know about Jamie Vardy? Who? Jamie Vardy? Jamie Vardy? Yeah. He plays this is for like Lesser. Jamie Vardy. Uh, I know him. I know he's old. Okay. No, fair enough. Inshallah, okay. you might see me play though. No, right. I just want to give you advice. you 17 years old, right? Yeah. How many years do you train football? Um, I've been training for like four years. I've had a tr uh, few trials with some uh, like professional You're beginning clubs. when you was a kid? Uh, no, 12, 13 years old. You need support from me? I wouldn't. I, I, would, I would take it. I'll Where take you it. want I sign you? Paris Saint-Germain, <laughs> Manchester, Real. <laughs> Pick. Inshallah. Pick your team. <laughs> it's okay, let okay. me talk. No, no, Thank no, you let me much. talk. It's very interesting. Yeah. Very. Um, so, so I'm from Birmingham. So Birmingham? I've been to, um, I've been to like the clubs like Aston Villa, Birmingham City, West Brom. You know, on trial there. Obviously, it, it's it's really like a uh, professional environment. So like they look for certain things in a player in it. But um, right now, I'm just going through like non-league to potentially get a move if I can. Inshallah. Good luck, brother. Good luck. Okay. I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> Thanks I'm very much. For that. Good luck, brother. Hello. Gentlemen in the blue T-shirt, can you make your way down here? Yeah, you make your way down here. While you're doing that, let me just ask a quick question, uh, Habib. When you fought Con uh, Conor McGregor, was he harder to beat than you imagined, or was it less hard than you imagined? <laughs> and I was like, if. If I, if, if I'm gonna be honest, it was not easy, but only one thing I don't expect is uh, like he tap very easy, you know. Oh. It, honestly, I'm gonna be honest. I just catch him and he tap, you know, it's like you bring, you bring, you bring like 20,000 people from Ireland to Vegas to support you and in front of everybody you tap, it's like, yeah. this one, other one fight, Fight like fighter, like skills. He was good, you know. Uh, I feel he was uh, preparing for defense uh, on my wrestling, grappling, like everywhere. But uh, the way how he tab, it show his uh, interesting. Weakness. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, sir, you came up to the front, sir. This is your moment. Hello, baby. Salam alaikum. Uh, I am traveling to Dagestan next year. Uh, 
can I, will, you, will you be there in January and can I train at your gym? If you travel to Dagestan, yeah. do you have visa? Yeah. What visa you have? Uh, tourist. Who give you visa? One month. <laughs> <laughs> you want to meet with me in Dagestan? Go well, on, if I say yes, everybody going to come to Dagestan. <laughs> <laughs> can I train at your gym though? <laughs> what you, what you going to do in Dagestan? Train, wrestle. Train? Wrestling? Yeah. You wrestler? But, not not but, that good. But your ears don't look like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you gonna stay? Hotel, hostel. Hotel. <laughs> you gonna bring a lot of cash money? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> no, it's like Dagestan, it's a very nice place. Even right now in coach, my, my coach in Dagestan, he stayed like more than one month. And uh, like a couple days ago, he called me, Habib, how, how can I s spend my money in Dagestan? I say, well, why you want to spend money? Because I don't even pay for one month, non like, because everywhere I go, like, like eating or somewhere, people don't take money from me. You know, I just want to spend, like, I just will live here a little bit money, please. Tell people, <laughs> you know, it's like, when you're going to come to Dagestan, you're going to understand this is the most beautiful place in the world. Thank you. Okay. Thank but, you. but when you come to Dagestan, we're going to talk after a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Just, just by the mic. Let's try and make these nice and quick now, the questions, so we can get as many as we can, can in the last few minutes. Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. Firstly, I'd just like to say apologies the way I'm dressed, because I come straight from the gym. Number two is, Brother Khabib, I believe that you have unseen help. Okay, this help, I believe that because and a lot of the times the wisdom you use um, in, your, in your interviews, I, I remember once um, you won a fight and you were saying, look, I've got my father, I've got my coach, I've got my brothers, Islam, Abu Bakr, a few others, and you said, if I forgot anyone, please forgive me. And in my head, I thought, this man's full of mashallah, you know, he, he remembers everyone and he doesn't leave anyone out. And I just think that in a lot of the stuff that I've seen in here, I believe that this, obviously, which people don't see the way the help comes from above, because we believe, with due respect to everyone's belief, there's something spiritual about you, mashallah, and I believe that you have that help. Above. And I know you shouldn't praise people in the face, but you're a big mashallah. I know you say, look, we've got an example, but I believe in this era, with due respect to everyone, alhamdulillah, and everyone can vow this, that this man, is the most influential Muslim on the face of this earth, I believe. Wallah. Okay. Wallah. Okay, thank you. No, 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 well, we've got to ask questions. It's just my if question. You, if it's you my question. Straight to your question. My question please. is... Straight to your question. My question, brother. Sorry, Khabib. My question. Inshallah, me and this man are going to keep in touch. <laughs> because you know why? Because he's going to make it happen. Alhamdulillah. I'm telling if you. We can ask you a question. We've got to think of the others. He's a good man. Brother yes. Khabib, I want to ask that. Look, obviously, I know sincerity is a big thing that we don't tell people what we do when people don't see, but... What is that one action? Because what, what, what prayer or what is it? Because I've seen you before you go in, you raise your hands and you ask. What advice or tip can you give me firstly and all of us that whatever we do in life, whether it's pertaining this life or the life after, you know, to, to get that unseen help? What? Like you want, I give you advice like, uh, sorry, I don't understand. Just, just so we can have the help from above, whatever we do in life. Mm -hmm. Are you asking how, how we ask for help? How, how well, does... Y yeah, you know, is there a special prayer or... Do you, when, when you do yeah. that, is there a special dua? Like, like uh, my advice for you, like with people, with people, your relationship always gonna broke. Even your father. If you have like brother, doesn't matter, your kids, one day it's gonna be broke, you know, because someone go to Allah, someone here gonna stay here for some time, you know, and uh, it's always gonna broke, you know, like, but the relationship with Allah, it's never broke, you know, and that's why it's like my advice for you, be close with Allah, you know, I know it's very hard, and uh, you know, it's like, uh, what's very special with Allah, like people, if you make something like mistake, like uh, people gonna say, oh, this guy, bad guy, you know, doesn't matter your best friend. How many times we see how two best friends they broke, you know, and even like wife and husband they broke. How many times we say this? Like, 
They think today they think today we have best relationship and after some times they broke. But with Allah, Allah always give us uh, place to come back. He always f gonna forgive us. That's why try to make with Allah good relationship and uh, he gonna fix between you and people. And I'd like to say, just before I finish... No, no. We, no we have to end it there. Cause we've got to think Thank about you, brothers, brother. please. This guy is very yes, aggressive. Okay. Be careful, brother. Thank you. The man, the man Thank you. Thank waving, you for yes, good words. With your Jazakallah hand there, yes. Khair. Nice Thank and loud, please. <laughs> right, okay. Can we, not, can we have genuine questions? Because we're just wasting time no, with Habib. No. Yes, sir, over there with the black shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand okay. what you're can talking we, about. Right. <laughs> can, we, can we have this guy here? So can we have this everyone, yeah. he, say, he say in Russia, he just want to sit with me. I just say, I don't understand what you're talking <laughs> right. about. Okay. <laughs> right. Brother, we, we, we need to guys, move on. Guys, can guys, can I say something? Here, one guy asked me about akhlaq. Here, we all, like, almost all Muslims, like, doesn't matter. You're Muslim, we just have to show. I think a lot of people don't understand what is this akhlaq. I am... Everybody excited, I understand. But I am alone here. You guys like thousands here. Please, let's yeah. follow the rules, be disciplined. Exactly, let's, let's, uh, let's try and get as many people's voices. Y yes, sir, over there, with, yeah, you, sir, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum How are you? Uh, Brother Khabib, what do you think of Khamza Chimaev? Um, he's got a fight at the end of October. Who do you think will win? Why, why I think? Or what, you what, ask, what, yeah, what do you what, think? What, yeah, what do you think? I think I think he's gonna win. I don't think this guy can stop his wrestling pressure, uh, ground game, even in stand up. I know this uh, Korean guy. I don't know his name. He's very good. He's good on on his hands. But I think he can take him down and finish. I really believe. I don't think he can stop him. Brilliant. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, somebody over there waving ne next to the person with the lights to the to my left. Yes, you've got both hands up in the air. Yes, can you shout out? Yeah, shout. Come down if you want. And while you are coming down, let's take a question from this gentleman. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother, I was wondering, it's my birthday next week, and I want to remember this moment for the rest of my life, so it would be possible that you take a photo of me and my brothers. And sing happy birthday. Okay, listen. We brother, can, we can after. We're gonna take. Okay. After. After we're after gonna after. Okay. 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 Right. Um, there was something, right, this sister over here. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Khabib. It's lovely to see you. Uh, you are so unapologetically Muslim. Mashallah. You don't see many uh, people like that. What's your message to the young Muslims who are struggling to practice their faith and open? What would be your message for them? Like, because, like, you're amazing, so, yeah. Uh, you say for young Muslims who don't practice? Uh, no. no, who struggle to, like, practice their faith in the struggle, open. Struggle to show like, their faith. So how you show time? people you're a Muslim, ah, yeah. young people, they who might be a bit embarrassed. It difficult. Why? Yeah. How do you make them strong? So, but what, yeah. like my, my advice not for them. Yeah. My advice for their parents, you know. My advice for their parents. Because, because kids, they're gonna always follow their parents, you know. Yeah. If their parents struggle, they're gonna be struggle too. This is their parents' mistake, it's my opinion. Because when I was grew up, when I grew up like, I never see my, my parents struggle because of they Muslim. They just show me example. They just inspire me. Be Muslim, be just good person, you know, pray every day. Don't do crazy stuff. Like, I just, I just, I just was following my parents because I was a kid and I don't understand nothing. You know, that's why I, I, have, I have advice for parents. Be good Muslims. Doesn't just be a good person, doesn't matter. For their kids, if they're gonna show, they're gonna follow. If you don't show, how they gonna follow this, you know? And uh, I, I, you know, it's like uh, one time it's like I, I read about like father and son relationship. He say to his son, father give his son advice, please be careful where you step your foot. And uh, he say, no father, you have to be careful because where you gonna step foot, I'm gonna follow you. You have to be careful, that's why. Amazing, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're just gonna take uh, one more question now. 
I know. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Hey, it's nice to meet you, Khabib. Um, thank you for coming here today. I wanted to ask you about what your view on women in the sport is, and also if you've ever had a time where emotions got the better of you, how did you control yourself? Have you ever felt like leaving the sport or felt so scared to spar somebody? Is there anything that has ever put you off, and how did you overcome that? Second, I don't understand you. Ask me Have how you, I'll slowly, control myself. So, so yeah, so say for example you've had a really emotional day or there's something going on in your personal life and you've come into the ring to spar, has it ever got the better of you and how have you controlled that? How have you come over that? Contained so yourself how do you and gone focus? into the ring? How do you focus yeah. when something's you know, getting like the better of you? Everybody have sometimes like bad bad yeah. mood or bad days, you know? It's like where everybody become emotional, you know? Yeah. Myself too, you know. It was like Have you ever like, felt like giving up ever before? And yes. you overcome it. Like sometimes, like I, I become like a little bit crazy. Like <laughs> sometimes in the gym yeah. or something happened with like sparring partners. Yeah. But then when I come down, you feel better. You know, I feel better, of course. Yeah. If I do something, of course. But long time I don't have problem with nobody. You know, okay, alhamdulillah. Good. And I don't want be problem with yeah. people. You know, and uh, and uh, it's very hard to control ourselves yeah. when we go yeah. crazy. When you go emotional. My, my experience told me, just don't say nothing. Yeah. When you become ex uh, emotional, just a little bit be quiet, be quiet. After a couple of minutes, you're gonna calm down. You know, it's yeah. like my experience. Because when people become emotional, they make a lot of mistakes. You know, yeah. when you're emotional, just sit. If you stay, you have to sit. <laughs> you know, I'm a or just just walk, yeah. walk, walk around. I'm a boxer myself and sometimes I feel like in a combat sport emotions get the better of you and people don't actually realize the strength it takes to keep that keep it keep it at the side. But I think you have to you have yeah. to you have to but <laughs> yeah, you know it's yeah. like if you boxer please don't become <laughs> yeah, don't to. become emotional yeah. you know it's like uh, for boxers is very dangerous. Very. If I become emotional maximum I can take down people. <laughs> but you guys can knock out people that's why. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Don't get him emotional. Because I want to say, don't get him emotional. <laughs> right. You. I've been told the good news is we can take two more questions <laughs> after. No, no, no. I'm sorry you pushing your head is not going to do it. I, I will go around the audience. But once we have picked out the raffle for a signed t shirt by Mr. Habib here, I'll get to Mr. Habib. So get, if you've got a raffle ticket, please get it ready. I'll ask Habib here to pick out the winner for the raffle. One three nine. One three nine. That's raffle number one three nine. If you have got the ticket, one three nine, and you go to the SKT welfare stand, which is in the foyer, and you will get your T-shirt, and it will be signed by Mr. Habib. Again, the number is one three nine. Show your ticket, and that's it. Sir, so I'm just going to take two more questions. Yeah. There's one gentleman over there holding up a bottle. Can you? Can you... Guys, please. Listen, please Guys, be fair. Please, sit. please be fair to brother, Mr. Habib. Brother. He really wanted to brother. speak to you. Sorry. I think you have to sit too. Okay. Just show them. <laughs> Just what? Yeah, show them example. <laughs> okay. Inspire right. them, please. Guys, There's please the advice sit. from me. Okay. As Mr. Habib says, listen, show you the example. Look what I'm doing please sitting sit. down. Look at this guy. This guy show you guys good example. This guy inspire you. Please sit. We got nothing. Right, this is the gentleman with the bottle, yes. Assalamu alaikum, Habib. Please, please okay. sit down. Can you tell me who has been your most difficult opponent in all your fights and why? So please, guys, sit down because... Okay. Can we sit down and let Mr. Habib answer the question, please? Sorry? Yeah. Mr. Habib will not answer the question or take any more questions until you are sitting down. He has made that clear. Please respect his, please respect what he's asking you to do. Please show him the respect by doing what he's just very politely asking you to do. He's actually been on stage a lot longer than we had planned and he's happy to do this, but please show him the respect. You ask me about... Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't sit down, we will be ending this now. I think, I think it was 
even even this fight don't look like hard. It was a very tough fight for me versus uh, Justin Gaethje because it was very emotional moment. It was very like uh, like very emotional days for me when I fight with him, you know. And uh, I was injured. It was lot of lot of problem, you know, like on my body, on my mind, and think. And uh, I think it was very tough fight, you know. And stylistically, he was very good opponent. And uh, mentally, it was very tough to handle all these things what happened with me before the fight. And I think his last fight, it was most tough fight in my career. Okay, shukran. Thank you very much. And one last question uh, from the gentleman in the green T-shirt. I'm, I'm so sorry. I know this has made me really unpopular by not being able to get all the questions in, but we've done our best here. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Khabib. Uh, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned throughout your career? So when you, from when you started to your last fight, what's one of the biggest lessons that you've learned and you've taught yourself? You talk very fast, bro. Sorry. <laughs> um, so from all your fights, from your first fight to your last fight, 29th fight, what's the biggest lesson that you've, that you've learned from I yourself? Learned, uh, mm. Good question, good question. Mm. Biggest lesson? Yeah. I think uh, I think we, if I watch, I want to give you a good answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I think when I jump outside the cage, I think. So what what was the lesson there? Was it? It was lesson like doesn't matter like what people say, what happened with you, you just have to be, you just have to control your emotion. I, in my opinion, you just have to control your emotion. Doesn't matter what people say to you, you know, because uh, <clears throat> I know like people like action, you know, huh. something happened, drama. They like drama, like everything, but but you have to control yourself you know you cannot become like emotional and when like millions of people follow you they look at you you know it's like it's uh, maybe for some reason this is good like i think like most of the time if you watch i don't think this is like a good uh, like good example i don't think so even i did this i don't know maybe one more time it's happened with me Maybe I'm gonna become emotional. You never know, yeah. you know. But uh, right now, when I wo when I watch on this situation, I think you have to control yourself. Doesn't matter what happened with you. Also, please can I have a handshake. It's my only chance I could ever shake your hand. Please. <laughs> <laughs> which which one? Which one? Which one? Okay, okay, okay. Right there we go. That, uh, I've been told we could take this one last question no, from this brother here. For me. From this brother sorry. here. For, for, in oh, the great. Okay. Uh, brother. In, in the my, great. I'm sorry, brother. My question is in the great. Oh sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, he, I'm sure Khabib wants to. Salam Khabib, how are you? Okay. Especially come from Birmingham and the brothers over there on that side. Okay. Brother, uh, just quickly, you've talked about football. Have you heard of the sport cricket? There's a reason why. Cricket? Yeah. Brother, can we make this quick? Sounds Patience. like sneakers. Otherwise, we'll huh? go to the next person. Okay, what is, I'm, I'm here. I hear about cricket, like yeah. only India, right? Pakistan, Kashmir. Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. No, that part. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Pakistani so what, guys, my the, brothers. The, <laughs> but like Pakistan, India, like that part, right? Exactly. So the reason, the reason why, sorry, the reason why I asked that question is because I'm... My bad, my bad. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. The reason why I ask that question is because I'm here representing another role model. His name's Moin Ali. He's an England cricketer. And I'm representing him. People have heard of him. He's another positive role model like yourself. Uh, inshallah, we could get him to meet with yourself. He's met, he also sports to Liverpool also. Yes. Brother Patience. And so my question is that we also are working in inner city Birmingham area. We're working with Aura, which is an MMA gym, uh, who, you know, with Express Carpets and Manjaros, we're working together. And the thing is that we, we're taking kids off the street we'll instead, of having, this quick. instead of having, uh, you know, the negative influences. They need positive role models like yourself, like Moin Ali, you know, people who are, you know, who's strong in the deen and their faith. 
what message do you have for the young youths of today who only have positive role models like drug dealers and a negative wife? Do you have a, a message okay. that will, you know, if you can answer that question? And, and okay. after my last question, no, if you no, can no, say hello no, to my no, daughter. No, no, brother. No, it's brother. Okay. Sorry, yeah. It's okay. Zarkala. You know, it's like this problem, what you say right now to me, it's like this problem is everywhere. True. Right now, like uh, world have problem with the young generation. Mm -hmm not only here in UK or Pakistan, yeah. India, everywhere, like in Russia, Dagestan, like in Arabic world, yeah. like in USA, everywhere. Like young generation right now is different, you know? Yeah. It's like completely different than it was like 20 years ago. Last 20 years, like world changed completely, you know? Yeah. Like uh, views, how they thinking, how they talking, yeah. you know? And the world become very small, like even like, like 20 years ago from Dagestan, like from my republic where I'm born, it was not many people who can go outside. Right now, like everybody traveling, you know. Today I am here, tomorrow I'm gonna be like in other part of this world, you know. And world change, world become very small. And for young generation, uh, not many people who can inspire them. True. This one is bad, but no, it's like all famous people, they become famous. They just try to buy Ferrari, buy yeah. good houses, living good life, show their expensive glasses. Like, you know, it's like, I don't understand. It's like a world very changed. And uh, I think we, like, like me and uh, older than me, people who have kids, they have, to, they have to be careful what they kids doing, where they going, who their friends. Yeah. We, have to, we have to control our kids. And right now here in Europe, US, eh, like UK, everywhere, even like, like uh, police ask them how your parents talk with you. You know, it's like, it's crazy. This is your kids. This is not like a police problem, how you talk with them. Because not, not uh, nobody in the world want some good things f for your kids than father and mother. Sure. And father and mother have to, like, give them good education, good akhlaq, talk with them, control them. If they have bad friends, tell them, hey, this guy's bad friend. Be careful because he used to do, like, drugs and you friend with him. And not today, after tomorrow, you're going to become drug dealer too. And, you know, it's like, my message not for them, my message for parents. Yep. They have to control these things. And, you know, this is not only here. This problem is around the world for everybody, you know. And I think, like, uh, kids is different, but worry about our generation sure. who grew up without iPhone, YouTube, Instagram, with all this stuff, you know, like 20, 30 years ago. These people have to control this generation. This is my advice. Maybe I'm wrong, but who cares? This is, is my opinion. The person this is my opinion. Exactly and a quick the, salam the per for Doha. There's only three and she could grapple anyone, trust me. You know what? Brother, the person Sorry. whose spot you took is yeah. behind yes, you. Yes, he yes, des yes. He's yes. desperate. Yes. Alhamdulillah, as a blessing, just brother, you have to inspire this people. You have to show respect. good example. Show respect. Please. Thank you. No, no, no. This, brother, the, this is the last so question. This is the last question. Zakhar Akhair. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Abdul Shahid and thank you for coming to United Kingdom first of all. MashaAllah. And, and you have a lot of British, Pakistani, British, Bangladeshi fan base here. When would you travel to Pakistan and Bangladesh? Uh, I remember like beginning of this year, I have offered to come to Pakistan. Inshallah, very soon I will go, Inshallah. I really want to go this place. We give you a presidential security. <laughs> what do you say? We give you a president security. You, brother, I don't need security. <laughs> <laughs> He's secure enough. I can be your security, brother. Don't worry. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm joking. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have okay. time for this evening. That Mr. Habib guy. has given you... The opportunity, I know there are so many people who want to meet him, but please, ladies and gentlemen, can you please show your thanks and your respect to Mr. Habib Nur Mohammadov? Thank you so much, guys. Jazakallah khairan for coming. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming, guys. No, 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 brother. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Brother, no, brother. Brother, don't do this. Don't do this. Guys. Guys, get, let, let, let me talk. Guys, I come from...
other part of world here to see you guys. And you know, it's like, uh, I think I deserve some respect too, you know. Thank you. I just want to say Jazakallah uh, khairan for coming. Thank you so much. You know, I feel like uh, around the world, you know, it's like uh, big, big support from my, from my people, you know, who have same views like I have. And I really believe here is like everybody, we have all same views. And Jazakallah for Jazakallah Khairan for everything. And please take care of your kids. This is our future. Inshallah. This one is most important. Thank you guys. Jazakallah Khairan. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Alex guys. Thank you so much. Jazakallah Khairan. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. No, no, no.